welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Sheila in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make that Tunisian crochet stitch I know um, this wasn't a planned video but I had to do it because I'm going to be doing some um, projects with this stitch so I had to make a video to prepare you for that particular stitch and the amazing thing is you don't have to have a Tunisian crochet hook that's what I've noticed because I've worked on several projects with my um, crochet hook as well and it works perfectly fine you just have to be more careful with it so the stitches don't run off the hook but other than that if you can contour the stitches to stay on the hook then you can perfectly use your crochet hook as a Tunisian crochet hook so uh, for this project I'm going to be showing you how to make a dishcloth that's the simplest um, project that we can work on and I'm going to be showing you um, the rules of Tunisian crochet so that when we come to the future projects that I'm planning to give you um, you don't get stranded so let's start for the yarn I'm going to be using Ali's Cotton Gold Plus um, and I'll be using my 6mm crochet hook this is um, medium weight and it's 100 grams um, these are the yards but I'm sure we are not going to be using all of them all of this uh, the whole ball so let's get started so uh, with Tunisian crochet we're going to start off with a slip knot like that and we are going to make a sample of uh, 15 stitches so chain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 so we have our 15 chains here and now we are going to start working the uh, Tunisian simple stitch so um, with Tunisian crochet this is the very first stitch this one on the hook so we don't go into this one we are going to go into the second chain from the hook insert your hook pull over yarn over pull through sorry so you have two loops on your hook and then you're going to hold this go into the next stitch yarn over pull through so you have three loops hold this insert your hook yarn over pull through insert your hook yarn over pull through and you're going to repeat that until the end of the row And this is my very last chain and I've gone into it and yarn over and I've pulled through so I have a total of one two sorry one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen so you should have a total of fifteen loops on your hook and now we are going to do a return pass you're going to yarn over pull through one and then for all the rest we are going to be pulling through two two so yarn over pull through two 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 and we are going to repeat that all the way across So that marks the end of our very first row and this is how it looks like so we're going to row two and uh, we are going to go into these loops there are these loops that are popping out those loops there that are at the top so insert your hook in the very first loop yarn over pull through 
and continue to do that. All the way to the end. So um, when you come to the end, you're going to go into both loops. You turn your work to the side and go through both loops here. You can see we have two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through. So you should have a total of 15 loops on your hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Because we didn't do any increases and we didn't do any decreases. So yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two up to the end. So the only difference is the very first yarn over, pull through, is through one stitch, and all the rest are through two stitches. So like that. So we are done with row two. And we are going to row 3, so we are going to do that same exact thing. Since this counts as our very first stitch, we don't go into this one. We go into the second one, like that. And we are going to pick up all these stitches for a total of 15 times, because we are not doing any increases or decreases. And we are now at the end and we're going to turn our work to the side and go through both loops like that and over pull through you should have 15 loops on your hook so we start our return pass and over pull through one then yarn over pull through two up to the end and over pull through two So this is how we work that simple Tunisian crochet stitch and this is the texture that we get and I'm going to go ahead and work some more rows so that I get a perfect square so if I have this we started with a total of 15 chains and that measured around uh, 4 inches I'm going to go ahead and build my work up to 4 inches somewhere around here and then I'll get back to you and I show you how to bind off. All right, so I'm now back and I've done a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten rows. And this is how the work has come out. So now you can notice that uh, the very last row will create very big loops at the top, which we don't want. So I'm going to be showing you how to bind off. So to bind off, you're going to just go into this stitch, yarn over, pull through, all, like that. Go into the next stitch, you have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, all. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, all. So it's like we are making slip stitches to bind off our um, last row so that we avoid those very big gaps at the top you can notice um here we don't have them and here we still have them just because we haven't yet gone across so continue to do that all the way across and uh this stitch can be used for several projects. I believe it could be good for a sweater. It can be good for tops, whatever you want to use it for. You just have to learn the basics. So I'm done with this and now I'm going to go into the very last stitch just like we've been doing. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. Yarn over, pull through all. And uh, this is how 
our dishcloth looks like you can notice it has a curl at the bottom here and we can deal with that so I'm going to chain up one and go to the side of the stitch and I'm going to be placing one single crochet in each and every row so one single crochet in each and every row I won't be doing slip stitches on this side because it would make my work tight so I'm doing one single crochet in each and every row so since we had 10 rows we shall have a total of 10 single crochets So the reason why we are doing the edging on this stitch is to prevent the curl. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So I have made 10 stitches on the side. So now we are going to the bottom side that's also curled. And I'm going to just chain up one and go into the very first stitch here with a slip stitch like that. Then slip stitch all the way across just like we did on this side so that's what we are doing here at the at the base of our work you should notice that when we were starting the foundation row here because we worked from from here upwards so when we were starting here as we went on our work started curling you can see that curl so that's what we are trying to eliminate so we are doing slip stitches all the way across And for our very last stitch, we shall go into both loops. Sorry. And slip stitch like that. And then we shall do a single crochet row on this side. So I'll chain up one and single crochet in each and every stitch, in each and every row, sorry. So those are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So this is our very last stitch. And then um, since this is a dishcloth, I want to create a loop where we can hang this little dishcloth. So I'll chain up. A total of around 10 chains 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and then go into that very next stitch with a slip stitch and over pull through and then I'll chain up one and yeah this marks the end of our tutorial You can cut your yarn here and you can weave in this end you can hide this tail and this is how our dishcloth has turned out so I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial because I'm yet to bring tutorials that um, involve this stitch and uh, wish we, we won't be um, intimidated by it this is how the backside looks like looks like a knitting stitch and this is how the front side looks like so thanks guys for watching i'll see you in my next video which is going to be incorporating this stitch to create a garment that we can wear so thanks for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe to my channel have a lovely day bye